Are you tired of the same old pro wrestling? Then check out the amazing action on powerslam.tv, the biggest indie pro wrestling channel in the world. Get over 3,000 hours of the best pro wrestling events from over 100 of the biggest names in the industry from over 15 countries around the globe. Get your free trial today at powerslam.tv. The following advertisement is sponsored by Beercade Y-E-G. Hello. You are listening to a commercial for the podcast Over the Top Rope, the flagship podcast of the Wind Column Sports Network, as well as a proud member of Backbreaker Media. Again, this podcast is sponsored by Beercade Y-E-G. You can find us pretty well anywhere that podcasts are played, including on the iTunes, Podbean, the Google Play, SoundCloud, and on windcolumnsports.ca for all your previews, reviews, and breaking news from the world of professional wrestling. Tune in every Friday on Backbreaker Media, a member of Win Column Sports. Hello friends, this is Spencer Love, the host of Conversations with Love, the exclusive one-on-one interview series sweeping the nation, or at the very least, the great province of Alberta, Canada. Tune in weekly to Backbreaker Media, a proud member of the Wind Column Sports Network, as I host a member of the independent wrestling community here in Alberta, or wherever the hell I feel like interviewing somebody from. You can only find it on Backbreaker Media, a proud member of of the Wind Column Sports Network and proudly sponsored by Beercade YEG. Welcome back to episode one, two, zero. Yeah. Of the Sense of Struggle. I am Chris Parrish. I have no social media. <laughs> yeah. You know where you can find Maniac now? Nowhere. Yeah. I'm a fucking ghost. Or a gypsy. You take that back. <laughs> That's a racial slur. A very struggle. This it's just gypsy. It's a very struggleicious racial slur. <laughs> There's a lot of S's there. <laughs> Jesus. I, I had a hard time putting that one out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I am the one who drank before this episode. There you go. So, I mean, I'm a little bit of the thothy of the struggle with the tipsies. You're, you're a thothy bitch. <laughs> thothy. Anyways, yes. Look me up online. Bitch, you can't. I'm a ghost. Yeah, no, the one thing that sucks is, like, you had so many cool throwback photos that I'm like, oh, yeah. Now. They gone. Yeah. They gone. Can you, can you at least text me those? I'll see if I can find them. I probably have them somewhere. <laughs> and if I don't, I'll fuck they're it They're probably out. just all on your Facebook. And then you're just like, nope. Yeah, they probably are on Facebook. Which is deactivated but not deleted. No. So if I really wanted, I guess I could reactivate and get them. I guess. <laughs> Gotta say though, not having social media, really nice. Yeah. Really relaxing. I don't have a fucking clue what's going on in the world, and it's kind of nice. So the only way I can poke you now is like, like this. Pretty much, like actually like, being poked. Okay. Yes. Which did you ever poke me before? No. Uh, no, but now that is you that have even no- a thing, is that even a thing still? Is that a, like a, a, a part of the app? Like, can you? Oh, I get poked by like random fans on Facebook. It is fucking I weird. I bet you do. <laughs> I got people waving at me a lot for some Yeah, reason. the waves are a thing now, especially in the like the chat. Yeah. And I was like, who the fuck waves on a chat? 
Like, You'd be surprised. There's a lot of people. Like no, that. no, but like, no, like I know a lot of people do, but like, why? Of all the things, at least say hi. Like, hi. I, I, at least like say something. Like something. This person waved at you, and you're like, cool. I'm just gonna turn and walk away now. But there's no. I usually, I usually physically wave back in my phone and hope that works. <laughs> It never does, but... Like, why is there, like, an emoticon for just, like, the guy just, like, you know, does, like, the whole hand over her face, walks the other face way? Face palm. Yeah. No, I agree. I agree. Like, I don't know. Anyways. Waving's weird. Oh, on social media. Yeah, like... Social media waving. Huh. Not approved. You're on a chat, and you do a fucking wave. Like the fairy you are. Like, it's a chat. Say something. Something. Yeah. Well, you know who is waving? Uh, several people. Conor McGregor, and he's waving bye-bye to mixed martial arts. He's retiring out of, out of nowhere. Uh, Seemingly out of nowhere. That looked good segue, by the way. It was all right. Uh, well, wasn't too bad. And then he's waving hello to a sexual assault charge yeah. from a month ago. Yeah. How did that stay quiet for a month? Maybe he took somebody's belt without asking. Or phone, so they couldn't talk about it. <laughs> well, he smashes those. Those are on video. Give me a phone. Hand your belt. Yeah. Nah, nah, nah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I wonder how long he's going to stay retired. He's already retired once. And yeah. he came back. Like, he retired, and then, like, six months later, he was he had two fights under his belt. You think this is just for uh, a way to get more money out of the UFC? I don't think he needs money. I think he, what he wants... Is he wants shares. He wants a piece of that company. <laughs> He's like, oh, you're not giving me a piece of the company? I'm done. Fuck you guys. He's trying to build that McGregor empire. That proper 12 empire. Yeah. And that's proper nice of him. He wants some property for his proper Exactly. 12. He's a proper hoodlum. Yeah. Proper whore. Yeah. So, uh, he joins a list of, uh... GSP for retirees in 2019. GSP, a retiree. I mean, there's probably more, but those are the big names. Yes, those are the big names. I mean, yeah. But, I don't know. I don't think... Here's the thing about McGregor. He's done a lot. But I don't think he's done really enough to say, Hey, look, I'm an icon in this sport. Like, he's, you know... I think he has. He's, he's one of, if not the first... Dual weight champion. Well, no, BJ Penn was, I believe, the first, right? That's what I said. One of, if not, because I don't know MMA that well. But and then Cormier, I mean, he dominated the 155. Yeah, like Cormier's done it. He did after. No, I know, but I'm like, yeah, I mean, there aren't too many that have done it. GSP did it. Yeah, GSP very briefly, but he did it. Uh, Speaking of which, I have somewhere on here. Hang on. Um... Woodley versus Lawler, two set for June. That'd be good. Well, I think he... Didn't he become the first guy in history to have them at the same time, though? Not just Yes, and defending yeah. both of them. Did he um, defend both of them? He did. He had two at, two at once, and he defended them once, and then he ended up defending... I don't think he defended his lightweight one after. He might have been stripped of that, but I know it, he was yeah. still considered active. Yeah, I don't think he defended his lightweight one, which um, is why he got stripped of it. Speaking of which, you know who's not active right now? Is, uh, the hell's his name? The, uh, the uh, vacant 135 title now is because uh, TJ Dillashaw had to vacated the title. Yeah. So at uh, Cejudo and Morales are going to fight for that title. And John Jones is apparently teasing a bout with Stipe Miocic. Stipe. I hope Stipe I wins. That. I hope Stipe knocks the shit out of him. I mean, still want to see Barack and John Jones. Like, to me, that is still the big fight in MMA. Who? John Jones and Barack. Oh, I said Barack. I'm like, like Obama? <laughs> you know what? I want to see that fight too. I want to see John Jones versus Barack Obama. <laughs> well, I mean, like, how do you not want to see Lesnar and Jones? Like, it's. I think that would be the biggest test for John Jones. Beast first bones. <sighs> a bony beast right but I mean at the same time it's like okay try to knock that guy out I mean people have done it but I mean I shit know. I did it it'd be an interesting fight that's for sure yeah 
Uh, speaking of John Jones, though, he's actually set to face Diego Santos for light heavyweight title. And the uh, same card, Amanda Nunez is going to co headline with him versus Holly Holmes for the bantamweight to, uh, title. Yeah, I think both I've, champs retain on that one. Yeah, I like Holly Holmes, but that Amanda Nunez, she's fucking terrifying. Yeah. She is just another level. I think she is. Fighter. A few wins away from saying Ronda Rousey, who? I think honestly she could already say that because she knocked the fuck out of her. But yeah, but yeah, I think she she is like probably two fights away from cementing herself as the greatest woman yeah. of all time. If not, I mean, you could argue already. You can, but I mean, but fuck that. Why would you? Yeah, I mean, we're playing devil's advocate. Fucking sue us. Please don't. I don't want to be sued again. Well, they, they can't. This is an opinionated podcast. Well, fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. Um, let's look at look at that. Uh. How about some ball sports? Some big things are happening in ball sports. Yeah. Which ball sport do you want to go to? I got a bunch for the Blue Jays. Yeah, we might as well do baseball, because as of today... Opening day! March 28th, opening day, baseball! Baseball! Pedro Morales got traded. Yeah, so the only player on the team that I actually still know are... Kevin Pillar. Kevin Pillar Justin is my favorite, Smoke. and Justin Smoke. That's that's it. I don't really know I do. I guess Vladdy Guerrero, apparently it's well, imminent Marcus for him Roman. to move up. Never heard of him. On a serious note, I actually thought he got traded. I really did. Well, I think everyone thought he was. What about Sanchez? Is he still there? No, I don't know. Yeah, you know, Sanchez is still there. <laughs> yes, no, maybe. I don't know. Well, they got rid of somebody, and I forget who. Uh, they actually... Uh, I, have, I have it here. They... Uh, it was a pitcher. Uh, Axman? Something Axman? Joel Axford, you mean? Fuck, sure. Yeah, Axford. Yeah. Apparently, they he got injured in the minors, so they cut him and then re-signed him on a lesser contract for the miners. That's cold. <laughs> or but I like it. Saving cap, smart business move. I guess, eh? Um yeah, so Well, it's like what Washington did with Brooks Orpic though, after they won the <coughs> cup. Right. They traded him so that team could buy him out and then they signed him for a lesser contract. Yeah. It's what I want the Oilers to do with Sam Gagne this off this off season. Well, what's he worth now? I think he has like a three point four million dollar contract. But if they traded him some to someone, maybe like okay, well we'll trade him to you and like a third round pick for like a fifth round pick, and then buy him out, and then we'll just sign him for like a mil. And boom, you just save two and a bit. It's too bad that you can't go back to the days like say early two thousands where. You had uh, teams like uh, Detroit that would actually have, you know, their leaders, Shanahan, Eisman, who would actually voluntarily take a pay cut that year so they could sign someone like, say, I don't know, Brett Hull. Yeah, but they took a pay cut when their contracts were up. See, I thought it was more of like it just happened to work out that they took a pay cut in the middle. Cause, like, no, because a lot of those guys were just signing one-year deals. That's smart. Yeah. That is smart. One-year deals. I mean, they're just... I mean, they're Brett and Shanahan's... What not? They don't need a long-term deal. They and know they Yeezer got jobs. Did. And Yeezerman, one they of the best jobs. captains in my I think opinion Yeezerman of all got, the time. I think Yeezerman got a, uh, a couple years, though. I think they kept him for... But yeah, in my opinion, probably one of the greatest captains of all time. Yeah. All the time. Him and Messi, for sure, definitely go up there, I think. And Taze. I like Taze. Taze, baby. Um, well... Kind of have to say something about Crosby too. I mean, he did get all the cups. Shit, but yeah, you're right. Man, um, and uh, as or I Sack. said, and Joe, and Joe Saka, come on. Yeah, Saka is good. I'll give you that. Yeah. Um, Kendrick Morales, as we were talking about, he's uh, cash traded to Oakland for infielder, infielder Jesus, <laughs> and some international signing bonus money. I don't even know what that means. I think that means like when they want to like go and sign guys from Japan, they mm-hmm. now now the A's pay for it. <laughs> I think I think that's part of it. Like, that's so, weird. Like so, like part of the, uh, which is funny because if we knew anything about the A's with uh, with Moneyball, the A's don't give all money. <laughs> no, they don't. And then what else we have? Baseball. Um, yeah, John Ashford mentioned. Uh, Blue Jays catching prospect Max uh, Pentecost has left camp to consider the future, which apparently retirement is among that. That's weird. Yeah. I mean, maybe he's in, not in a good place personally. Who knows? But that's just you don't often hear about. Well, we're seeing that a lot more lately now with 
younger athletes understanding that there's more to them outside of the sport. So they and they leave, leave the before they get too uh, too beat up yeah. and young, which we'll get to in football in a minute. Well, because I was going to just say, I mean, you see that a lot more often in football now. Yes. Because... Speaking of which, two nothing Chicago over San Jose, hooray! And second period over for Edmonton, they're winning two one over Dallas. Yeah, try settle, a goal and assist, and McDavid goal and assist. There we go. Um, the Mariners uh, legend uh, Ichiro Suzuki announced his retirement from baseball. One of the greatest hitters in baseball. Is he? Oh yeah. Is it greatest home runs or just hitters? Just hitters. Like, his got on. All base percentage is great. I mean. I am very, very jealous of his on-base percentage, if you know what I mean. Sex. Well, just general. Ah, oh, fair enough. I mean, all of the generalities of that comment. Fair enough. Look into that what you want. Sex. Um, White Sox and outfielder Eloy Jimenez are Jimenez. in the... Whatever. Well, I'm just helping. Yeah, fair enough. Are in the process of... Fi- they actually finalized a six-year deal worth $43 million. He's a prospect, never played a game, and he already has a $43 million deal. That's impressive. I feel like we should do golf claps for people like this. Like he, the my only thing is he better deliver or else they're going to look dumb as fuck. Well, Chicago White Sox, they always look dumb as fuck. True enough. Although... And they're in the same city as the Cubs. That's true. And they have looked dumb as fuck. A few times before. Over a hundred years in a row, actually. Yeah. And the last one I have for baseball is St. Louis Cardinals have locked up all-star first baseman Paul Gilschmidt. That was Goldschmidt, people. Gilschmidt. I love I love God. Yeah, I read your mind. Yeah. Um, is apparently, ne- as of next year, his contract will run through 2024, and it'll be roughly around $130 million mark. And for anybody who cares, Bobby Bonilla still getting paid. Fuck, that's impressive. <laughs> I need something like that. A contract where I don't work and That's I get paid. a fucking agent. Let's just say That's that. an agent. Agent of steel. Yeah. So, from what we were talking about earlier, there's a couple people who have just retired in football. Yeah. Jordy Nelson, one of my favorites. As of them. today, yeah. As of today. No yeah. longer going back to Oakland. A lot of people thought, okay. He could be a good little pickup. I thought it would have been a great fucking option for the Saints. But he gone. Yeah. And also Gronkowski. Yeah. He gone. And what I love about this is I guess the Patriots knew he was going to retire. So they, in phrase, courted tight end Jared Cook in free agency. And he said, no, I'm signing with the Saints. Fuck you, Patriots. Fuck you. And fuck you hard. Hey, hey, hey. Hit my truck. We finally got something over the goddamn Patriots. Oh, well, there you go. Yeah. Fair enough, fair enough. Maybe that butt I mean, guy is all available for their tight end needs. But I mean, think about it. 30 years old and retired? Fuck, would that be nice? Millions, millions of dollars? Millions of dollars. Millions of dollars. But seriously, I will take a quarter of that. That's all I need. Just want a quarter of it. If I can get $100,000 a year to be retired, I'm just saying. I'm he- done. He should have retired on your wife's birthday. Because it was the 69th day of the year. Yeah. That would have been more Gronk. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it would have been. That's funny. Uh, ew. That felt gross. And then now you just realize your wife was born on the 69th day of the year. I bet you I could have gone my entire life and never known that. Uh, That's funny. That's really funny. No, no. Because you're the 70th. I know. <coughs> My birthday is the Bobrovsky. Isn't Bobrovsky 72? Who the fuck am I thinking of at 70? Uh, Holpe. Oh, uh, fuck. Close enough. I just want to one, of them, one of them's a Stanley Cup winner, so... Speaking of which, let's get into that next. Uh, the Capitals just locked up their uh, return to the playoffs. And... That's why I said that. Yeah, that, mm. See, there it is. Yeah, Absolutely. Um, Blackhawks actually just inked a deal with Dahlstrom for another two-year contract yep. extension. Uh, and the one thing that really bums me out, the Hurricanes, assuming which they probably will, make the playoffs, they're not doing any storm surges. No more sellies after games. 
I'm disappointed by that. Yeah, but just imagine if they if they win the cup. They have to do one then. I mean... I, That's I, the ultimate storm surge. Right? Because what they could do is have it go dark as they're celebrating, and then storm surge. Those bunch of jerks! And then Stanley Cup. I mean, just think, what happens if this is all just saving it for a big one with the cup? If That'd be fair. You know what? I'm behind them. I actually have... This would be the one time I actually would want Carolina to win. I actually have a Carolina Hurricanes jersey, and you bet your ass for I the East. Heart, I have a heart for Whalers. There you go. And I bet your ass I'm going to be cheering for them this year. I want them to go far. I really do. I want them to represent the East in the Stanley Cup Finals. I haven't decided who I want to represent the West yet. But uh, before we go into playoff predictions... Well, if your team makes it, obviously your team. Well, yeah, yeah, but uh, I, I don't know. It's looking pretty sparse right now. Uh, I mean, well, who's all... Nashville, maybe? Um, You know what? Let's go to playoff, playoff prediction right now. I'm going to pull up the uh, list. Or Colorado? Of, if they make it, I'd be okay with them. Well, going. they're in right now. I think them and Minnesota Stimmons. have the wild card right now. As of right now, it will be... Say, the playoffs will start today. Yeah. Tampa versus Columbus, Boston versus Toronto, Washington versus Carolina, and the Islanders versus the Penguins. And then in the West, it would be the Jets versus the Stars, the Preds versus the Blues, the Flames versus the Avs, and the Sharks versus the Golden Knights. Let's go through each round. You know what? I wouldn't actually be against the Blues. As a, quote, good Chicago fan, end quote, (sighs) I'm supposed to say no, fuck the Blues. But this is also a guy saying that the Bears would be your second team. and That's exactly my point. Like, I, don't, I, don't, I don't have that hatred. I really don't. It just seems See, trivial to have that and hatred. And you're funny. Usually I would go for my boy, Nick Holden, so I should choose Vegas. But this is why I don't. It's because Cause they're shit. No, it's because the Oilers have Kelly McCrimmon on their GM search list. And Vegas won't give anybody permission until they're out of the playoffs. And I would like to... Vegas out early, so if we were to hire him, we actually hire him in good time before the draft. Not like a week or two before that, the see, draft. See, that makes sense. So, I, yeah. I get that. I get that. It's, it's an Euler need thing here. Fair enough. Because I'd actually want Kelly McCrimmon as the Oilers GM. Speaking of which, on a side note, uh, last, was it, say in the last week, I went to three different hockey games, and uh, let's just say uh, Crusaders, great game. They lost. The uh, Oil Kings, first game of the playoffs, great game. They lost. The Oilers, great game. Kicked the shit out of them. Yeah. A nice big old 8-4 win over L.A. Two Hatties. Three Hatties that night. Was there? Sam Steele got his first career hat trick. Oh, so not in that game. Sorry. Yeah. No. But, I mean, good for Sam. I like Sam Steele. It's, and too, he had it's a, too bad that he's on Anaheim. It's a wicked backhand that he got on a penalty shot, too. You should check that one out. That I did. I saw that was nice. Ooh. Not as nice as McDavid's goal, no. which threw the legs. And his goal tonight, by the yeah. way. Beautiful. Well, his goal against uh, the other night, too. Just smooth. Threw against the legs. LA. Spreads the twain. Nice. Spreads the butter on the toast. Spreads his legs. Breakfast. Goalie's spread. legs. Yeah. Uh, oh, look at three nothing. Jonathan Taves with the goal. I enjoy this. I really wish I was watching. Hello. Um, okay, who do you choose, Lightning or Blue Jackets? Lightning. Bruins or Maple Leafs? Bruins. I agree to both those. Capitals or Hurricanes? Well, Hurricanes now. Absolutely, Hurricanes now. But this is only if. They do a Stanley Cup celebration. I'm sure they will. If they don't. Uh, actually, Captain. still them, yeah. Yeah. Still them, yeah. Uh, I would say, yeah, Hurricanes is seven. That'll go seven. And then Islanders and Penguins. Islanders. Islanders, yeah. And then let's just go like, keep it on that side. Uh, Tampa or Bruins? Tampa. Yep. I'll agree to that. And Hurricane or Islanders? You know what? I'm actually going to go Islanders. I will go Hurricanes on that one. I'm not saying these are our official picks. This, if hypothetically to start today, anyways. Um, then uh, and then Tampa and Tampa and the Lightning, or t- Tampa and the Hurricanes. Sorry, Lightning comes with a hurricane usually. Tampa against Hurricanes or Islanders. I'm gonna say Tampa. I, use, yeah. I, I like Steven Stamkos. I want him to win a cup. This is provided that their big stars show up this year in the playoffs. Exactly. I mean, because they didn't do that last year. No, and the year they went to the finals, they couldn't against my team. Uh-huh. As fun. 
Um, but they did it against Calgary, and we appreciate them very much for that. <laughs> You're right. Fuck you, Calgary. So we'll go to the West. Speaking of that, yeah. uh, Jets or Stars? Whew. I'm gonna have to go for Dallas on this one. Ooh. I don't go for Canadian teams. I'm like, or ever if it's not a, not the Oilers. F- fair enough. Um, shit. San Jose just scored. It. Ah, fuck them. Uh, Preds or Blues? <sighs> go Blues. Sorry, I should have closed to clarify. I'm going to choose the Jets and the Preds. So we're against each other so far. Um, Flames or Avalanche? Oh, Avalanche. Yeah, I can't really go against you on that one. And the Sharks or Golden Knights? Oh, Golden Knights. Yeah, I'll go with you on that one. I mean, I don't want Vegas to go well, but fuck San Jose. Yeah, fair enough. Fuck them. And then for the next round, for that one, it'd be Avalanche versus Golden Knights? I'll go Avalanche now because then Vegas is out. I'll go, I'll go Golden Knights. And then for you, it would be Stars versus Blues? I'd go uh, Blues. And for me, it would be the Jets versus Preds, and I'll go Jets. So then the third round for me, Jets or Golden Knights? Fuck it, Golden Knights again. I want to see them go to the finals again. And for you, it would be the, you said the Blues and the Avalanche? Yeah. <laughs> well, I'll go Avalanche on that one, because it would be really funny to see two teams... That were in wild, well, not wild card, but yeah. not supposed to be in there. That actually made it to the playoffs. Yeah. So, and you're, you're. Well, no, because we said Tampa, right? Yeah, that's true. Um. So you'd be Colorado versus Tampa. Who do you pick? Tampa. A shocking run-in by the Toronto Maple Leafs. <laughs> I really don't like the less chances this year. No. <laughs> I don't either. Just, I mean, there's really no team other than Vegas I want to, like, jump behind in the West. But I don't want them to win because of that reason. Because of that reason really, earlier. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to say yeah, Vegas goes finals and then they lose to Tampa. Because, I mean, they're too new. They can't win yet. But they can keep going to the finals. That's fun. I mean, part of me thinks it would be funny if they won. Man, if it was the Golden Knights versus the Hurricane, huh. Oh, <laughs> Storm Surge versus the Golden Knights, the way that they do games. What, Woo! what happens if you saw Washington and Vegas again, though? I'd be all right with it. That's like, that was a good series. Well, up until games two to five. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> Vegas has a show up and afterwards. Fair enough. But anyways, yeah. If the playoffs start today, that's what we think would happen. Mm-hmm. How about Phil Kessel setting the Penn's new franchise record for Iron Man streak at 320 consecutive games? Sure. I wonder how many hot dogs he's had in that time frame. 322. I think it's more. Times two. They, they did win a so cup. 640. They have won a cup in that time frame, right? So, 640. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> there was an off season. Exactly. And that was all this past off season. <laughs> it's a strict diet yeah. of Diet Coke and hot dogs. Yeah. That's how he keeps his girlish Maybe figure. Maybe Coke Zero. Yeah, because he ain't no bitch. Yeah, Diet Coke is Because he's a boss-ass bitch, bitch, Diet bitch, Coke is for bitch. sissies. Yeah. And Leaf fans. Yeah. Even though I drank it today. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the Blackhawks are going to face the Flyers in Prague for season opener next year. So there's that. The two other teams I saw going over there, I can't remember who they are. That's Doesn't the, matter. That's in the Czech, right? Yeah. Prague. Prague is the capital of Czech Republic. Oh, yeah, so... Who's the big Czech player? Voracek, I believe. That's some bad star power. Right? I think there might be one I more. I mean, it's not like when the Oilers played in Germany, it wasn't like, oh, yeah. We you got... had Reader. Yeah. <laughs> but it was, well, I mean, the best thing was Dreisaitl go up and going up against his dad. Yeah. That was funny. Yeah. Um, Char also signed a one-year contract extension. The base salary of $2 million. Yeah. Much less than his base salary this year of five. But he also got a, an additional $1.75 million in performance-based incentives. That must be ice time at games played. Probably. Maybe points if he gets, like, over a certain like amount. Like 20. Or if he gets five. <laughs> and the Red Wings also signed Jimmy Howard to a one-year contract extension. It's weird because they were having a hard time to decide between Howard and Mrazek. And now suddenly it's like, oh, yeah, we picked Howard. We're 100% behind Howard. That's weird. You almost got rid of him. But I, I think that's smart that they picked him because I think they could 
have a little bit of a. They don't have to worry about goaltending in the free agency. Like that's. Yeah. yeah. I mean, to go back to why the Oilers signed Koskin probably over Talbot and all traded Talbot was trying to get, get ahead of the free agency and now realizing, oh, you know, we're probably not going to win the bidding wars here. So yeah. let's just make a decision now. Um, I don't think anybody's going to jump over their heels to go to Detroit right now because they're not doing that well. No. But uh, it's 5.1 mil a year plus a $1.1 million playoff bonus if they make the playoffs next year. Yeah. Which. They won't. It's possible, but doubtful. Yeah. I mean, no one thought that uh, the Islanders were going to make it this year. Or Vegas was going to the final. You're right. Stranger things have happened. A um, couple of things. Uh, was it uh, Chicago Blackhawks have agreed to terms with the defenseman Chad Kiros or Crease. It's K R Y S Crease on a three-year entry-level contract. I guess he played in college. Yeah. Never heard of him before. Well, uh, Vancouver's Quinn Hughes is making his NHL debut tonight. Yes, he is. So. Hope he sucks. Glad uh, your enthusiasm is just catchy. Well, I, just, I don't like Vancouver. Not fair enough. Fair enough. Funny because your favorite player of all time played there. Yeah, and then he also played on Florida. So didn't he also play on the Rangers? Yeah, with Gretzky. There you go. And just imagine if they were actually in their prime, how sick that tandem would have been. They weren't in their prime, and they still kicked ass. They didn't really do that well. They did so well. You take that back. I barely played many games there. It's because he was a boss-ass bitch. He was battling a lot of injuries. Um, Lightning, Yandy Gore, is suspended for two games for an illegal check to the head. It was Something funny. you shouldn't do in the playoffs, because otherwise you, you won't be playing. Yeah. Uh, oh, I want to get your take on this. But let me finish the you know talking about it before you go for, go off. Okay. Bob Nicholson, wait! Let me finish. Said the Oilers won't resign Reader because uh, lamented the he hasn't scored with the club and has missed so many breakaways. Added that the struggling forward would have scored ten to twelve goals, they'd probably be in the playoffs. And go. He's right. Yeah, <laughs> I'm pretty sure if he scored ten to twelve goals, Lucci scored ten to twelve more goals. Everybody else on the team scored ten to twelve more goals. Each they'd probably be in the playoffs by now. Uh, you don't say shit like that ever. And he, why would he throw a te- uh, one of your players under the bus now? Like now, of all times. Yeah, especially when there's still a chance, but you're like, uh-huh. eh, fuck them. They're done. Yeah. You're a pending free agent. Hmm. You're probably not... Like, this franchise already gave up on him once. I mean, they drafted him for fuck's sakes. Mm-hmm. They brought him back. Yeah. He flat out says, I'm the first one to tell you, I've had a bad year. I just thought it was very disappointing that he would say that. The entire team got my, has my back and thought it was very disappointing that he would go out and say something like that. It's like, why? Like This just shows that I think Bob Nicholson should also be on the verge of getting the fuck out of, the, out of Edmonton. Hashtag Bob is a knob. Yeah. Get that spreading. I can't spread it because I don't have social media. <laughs> Hashtag Bob is a knob. Doorknob Bob? Yeah. I like it. <laughs> Hashtag fuck Bob. Bob, you're a slob. Slobby Bobby, the fucking knobby. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I get it. Like, re- Reader's not having a good year at all. Um, I don't understand why he, uh... Luches isn't having a good year either. <laughs> no one's talking about him. No, and he's making four less million than Luch. And can be traded. <laughs> but that's beside the point. Yeah, but had he had a couple of goals, maybe he would have. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> but still, I mean, stupid thing for Nicholson to say. I mean, I don't think that's going to affect people from coming to Edmonton because they didn't... Jim Neal say something stupid about Ben a couple of years ago, and then Ben just said, "Well, he should just keep his damn mouth shut." That happened earlier this year, I think. I think that was. I don't, I don't think it was this year, but I think it was the last, like either last year or the year before. But it was like also near the end of the year, and it's just like, get it? You're frustrated. You're very unhappy with how the season went, but just shut up and leave your players alone. Like, 
You're the president of hockey operations. Like, set a standard. Don't be a fucking goober. Agreed. Hashtag don't be a goober. Hashtag Bob the Knob. Uh, also, the last thing... Plus, this pr- burger's not even that good. Never tried it. Yeah. Now I really don't want to. It's probably tainted and makes you negative. Hashtag Bob the Knob. <laughs> you eat Bob it. is a knob. You eat it and you wish Toby scored 10 goals. Right? Instantly, <laughs> fuck Toby Reader. <laughs> fuck that guy. I, ah! did, I did like how many uh, hashtag uh, screw Toby, like all the Toby hashtags after, and then the office references came yes. out. That was creative. Yeah, I enjoyed that. And more office. So good. many that are just, you are the worst. That's Michael Scott to Toby. Yeah. Um, God, no. Please, no. Please, God, no. No, no. No! It's good stuff. <laughs> um, also, the last thing I have for hockey is that uh, truck driver caused a deadly crash with a Humboldt Broncos bus. Sentenced to eight years in prison today. Yeah, and did... Well, not today. It was well, yesterday. sorry, I should... But it was a couple, it was a couple days ago. What well, point is? Yeah, and then he was also fined 5000 for driving... Reckless driving or something? Yeah, like oh. not abiding by the safety regulations. Yeah. So... So, I mean, I feel it's not going to ever take anything. You can't bring it back because, you know, you can't bring the, the, the kids back and whatever. But it's at least a little bit of justice for the family. Wasn't well, that also ironic that the day that this was, like, that came out, how much Broncos got eliminated from the playoffs? I don't talk about that. I mean, just kind of, like, but, weird timing. Yeah, it, it's weird timing, and I mean, yes, I understand the irony, but I'm not going to talk about that. No. Yeah. Out of, out of respect, I'm just not going to touch that one. You're not wrong, though. <laughs> anyway, moving on! Moving on! Didn't say it was right, just saying ironic. Um, oh, also, it's 2-2 now for the Oilers and uh, Stars. Yeah, we want a 3-on-3. Three three. That's how McDavid and Dreisaitl will get points. Fair enough. Um, let's go on to wrestling. You want to talk about uh, TakeOver for me? Yeah. Okay, here's the card setup. Because the card's finalized now. War Raiders versus Black and Ricochet. Yeah. War Raiders win that one. I can see that. Are we doing predictions now since... You yeah, might as well. We're doing talking okay. about it. Just, yeah, because we did hockey ones. So. Yeah, might as well. Let's get it all over. Well, I mean, like, because after... Uh, they already announced that they were done in NXT at full sale. Yeah. So, why would they win the NXT tag titles? Well, you never know. Because, <laughs> I mean, the next day, I, I, if I'm not mistaken, it's supposed to be Black and uh, Ricochet vying for the Raw Tag Team titles. Kind of cool if it was Raw Tag Team Champions versus NXT Tag Team Champions. It probably won't happen, but it would be cool if it did. <laughs> I don't think it should happen, <laughs> but it'd be cool if it did. I honestly think War Raiders win, and then we see something with Cole and O'Reilly. Setting up for a you that. mean fish and O'Reilly? Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Well, fair enough. Because it seems like uh, Bobby Fish and Kyle O'Reilly are being put back. Together. Red Dragon back together. So uh, I think you'll. I think that'll be a thing. Yeah, I can going see after. That. And I'm excited for that. I'm excited for this match, and I'm excited for that potential as well. Uh, next match, Pete Dunne versus Walter. I think this is where he finally loses it. I, I think I, Walter finally. Wins. I think Walter wins in this one, just because I. think... It's weird that I. I mean, I know they've only had one pay per view, but. The United Kingdom Championship is on just a regular pay-per-view. But I feel like they're going to do the change here. And it's like, I feel like they should do that in London or in England somewhere. I feel like they owe the fans that. Well, I think a lot. But I guess, you know, it's the biggest weekend of the year. I bet so. you the second takeover will have the rematch. I'd be good with that. And then after that, you'll probably see, I think you'll see Pete Dunne called up on the main roster. You think so? I think so. He's good. He's held that title for over... I'd say close to 700 days at this point. It's 600 and something. I think it'll be 700 shortly after Mania, if, I wasn't, if I'm not mistaken. You know what? It's right here. Let's see here. Uh, he won it May 20th, 2017. Pete Dunne is at 675 days. Huh. It's going to be real close. So 25 days, and we're only, like, what, a week? Yep. Away from Mania, so. That's crazy. Longest reign, 675 plus days. Shortest reign, Tyler Bate, 125 days. Oldest winner, Pete Dunn, 23 years. <laughs> yeah. Holy shit, it's a child's toy. It's because Tyler Bate still to this day is not even 23. Exactly. Youngest winner, Tyler Bate, 19. <laughs> yeah. 
Heaviest champion, Pete Dunne, 205 pounds. <laughs> Lightest champion, Tyler Bate, 175 pounds. Look, people, I get that there's only two champions, but holy fuck! Those numbers are astronomically small! Yeah, but, you know, here's a weird thing. They're both English. What?! <laughs> now, how do you think that, you think that uh, Walter comes out as a heel because he's technically, like, an Austrian and rules over it like he's, like, Kind of a patriarchy kind of I, thing. I think he's going to be the heel because I think, and you just, A, he's going to be the bigger guy. So I think you're just going to be, you're going to refrain from cheering Pete down in that because he's going to be looked as, yes, he's been the 675 day reign champ longer when the pay per view happens. Yeah. But you are still the underdog from, you know, this fight. You're the small guy. You're the David. He's the Goliath. Um, so I think because of that, he's going to get the majority of the cheers. But I do think with this being a takeover, I think the fans are just going to go ape shit. Yeah, I agree. Um, but I don't know. I wouldn't mind Walter as a heel moving forward. I'd be, I'd be okay but, that. I mean, I can also see Walter and, you know, like a Joe Coffey doing something after Pete Dunne. Yep. Um, I can see. I like. The, I want the Coffee Brothers to actually start and go back to being a tag team. I like those yeah. tag. I really do. My uh, thing is like, who in NXT can actually make a, a legit threat against Walter as a champion if he was to win? Uh, Triple H. <laughs> Maybe John Cena. Cashisono. That would be good. I'd be good with that. That'd be yeah. fun. That'd be hard hitting and fun. I mean, that Dave Mastiff guy or. Yeah, it was it. Uh, what's his name? Uh, or that other bomber, Dave Mastiff. Yeah. yeah, it's. I think he could do it. Yeah, he, he can. I mean, they it. they got guys, but they just. I think they need bigger guys. I think they need to, they need to give him time to kind of make him more credible. So yeah, I think in the meantime, Cash Sono, why not? He'd be good. Or maybe if they maybe they do something out of the box and have Finn Balor. Looking nice. Right? <laughs> or even like again going out of the box, Sheamus, Cesaro. I like it. I mean, that'd be very Steve interesting. Europeans going. <laughs> Becky Lynch kicks the shit out of him. <laughs> and he pulls I mean, a Brock well, Lesnar and I mean, the who doesn't want to see like a Becky Lynch, Tony Storm, Becky Lynch, Rhea Ripley match? I'd like to see that wrestling end otherwise. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Let's move on from that. Brown panties, brown panties. Hot lesbian action. Yes. There we go. HLA. Um. Next, uh, it's listed here as Gargano vs. Cole, baby, yeah, for two, the NXT title. Two hundred three falls. falls. This is going to be a fucking good match. I'm going to. Here's my bold prediction: Adam Cole, two falls. I like it. And Johnny Gargano moves up. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I think. Oh, by the way, baby. Yeah. I mean, I think he has moved up, right? Like it was the four of them that they moved up. But as soon as Champa got hurt, he kind of stopped going up. Yeah, because, well, I think, like, the whole reason why they're pushing Black and... Ricochet? Ricochet as a tag team is because uh, Tommaso got hurt. So yeah. DIY's little comeback thing got halted. Yeah. So, um, yeah. And that's why I think they're putting a baby ba uh, baby face spin on Tommaso Ciampa right now with his surgery. Because I think when they bring him back up, I think DIY will be back together you don't realize how fucking small they are until you see them on the main roster. God yeah. damn, they're tiny. Well, and that's just the thing. You don't realize how big the, the guys on the main roster yeah. are until you see them live. Yeah, that's like, true. Jeez, like Zack Ryder is fucking jacked, but I mean. But here's the thing, though. The guys that we saw when we were there, like, most of them, I'm as tall as. Connor is gigantic. But not tall. No. Like, I mean, he's probably taller than me by a little bit. But not a ton. I mean, and just imagine like what like a Rey Mysterio or Pac was. Tiny. Like they're short, but they're fucking jack guys. Yeah. And then like Tony knees the same way. Yep. Tony's knees. Oh. Um. But yeah, that's gonna be good. I think. Yeah, I think you're right. Cole walks away with that one. Yeah. Um, I, I think this is gonna be the uh, this direction to where Undisputed Era. Hold starts dollars. taking over the titles because I think you'll see you see them Velveteen like a, and Strong after this. You don't think the uh, Matt Riddle's going to beat uh, Velveteen? No, because I, I do think Matt Riddle goes after Adam Cole or maybe? Roddy or, for one, like yeah, afterwards. I, I think that kind of. But yeah, Velveteen Dream Matt Riddle as we're moving on here. That's gonna be a good match. Yeah. I think Velveteen might actually go up against Adam Cole for the heavy or for the NXT title after. That'd be good. I'd be good with that. I'm just worried that the North American title, if they were to do that, 
I mean, somebody has to have a long stay with that title again. Yeah. Yeah, why not? Um, I think that, yeah, but I think you're right. They're going to go kind of uh, evolution style where they have, have all the titles. And then next year we're talking about Undisputed Era being called up. Yeah, I agree. But yeah, Velveteen Dream, Matt Riddle, I think, yeah, I think you're right. I think Velveteen Dream retains. That's also going to be a sleeper ma- my sleeper match for the best match of the night. I don't know, though. Fuck, there are so many good matches. On this. this is a good card. Well, I mean, you would think, obviously, Cole and Gargano main events. Yes. Uh, I think your semi-main event is probably Walter P. Dunn. I don't think so. I think the women's match... Well, no, women's, I think... I'm going to put that one right in the middle, yeah, to be honest. Yeah, third. Uh, I think, honestly, it's going to be tag team match opens, because they seem to be doing that. It seems to work out really well every time. I wouldn't be surprised if Matt Riddle and Velveteen open this one, though. That'd be good. I think that they'll want a hot opener. And then I can see them tag match, and then, yeah, I can see Pete Dunn and Walter B. Semi main. Yeah. But, yeah, let's like, get on to the women's match. Fatal 4-Way, Shayna Baszler defending her title versus Io Shirai, Bianca Belair, Kerry Sane. Who wins? Io uh, Shirai. Yep, yeah, yeah, I think so. I, uh... It's either Io Shirai or Bianca Belair. And the reason why is because I think they're going to do something with Baszler moving forward. And I think taking the title off her without her getting beat is the way they'll do it. Yeah. And uh, So you think the pin will be on Kairi Sane? Or Belair. Okay. I think, like, that's the thing. If Bel- if uh, you sure I wins, it'll be on win- Belair? Yeah, and if Bianca wins, I think it'll be on Kairi. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah, yeah I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to that. It's going to be a good show. Good show. I'm just, I'm, part of me is thinking, like, they might give it to Euro. And then bring Belair back as a heel. Okay. But this is also where I was very kind of confused with the call-up of Lacey Evans because she would stand to be the next heel on that show. Yeah. And now it's like, okay, who... She hasn't done shit now. If Shayna's to move up, you know, who's the next people that are going to step up in that heel side? And I was like, oh. Yeah. I mean, they need a... I don't know, they, they need a, a tandem or something like that. Speaking of call-ups, let's call up the match listing for WrestleMania 35. Yeah, yeah. like the 12, 13 matches. As of right now, there are 13 matches listed. Yeah. Um, and I say I said 12 or 13 because I knew there was 12 and I forgot the Andre the Giant Memorial. Oh, uh, yeah. And then that one. So, yeah. Now, do you think they have a women's one? No. No? No. If uh, they're not going to have a SmackDown women's match, well, Why? Fair enough, which we'll get to. Yeah. Um, Brock Lesnar defending his Universal Championship for Seth Rollins. Seth Rollins. I I, time. I'm going to throw two scenarios out. Okay. One, yes, I want to say Seth Rollins. That is the answer I'm going to go with you. However, last year, everyone picked Roman Reigns. That's true. And Brock Lesnar walked away with the title. That is very true. I wouldn't be surprised if we saw the same thing. Especially knowing that that's not the main event of the show. That is very true. So, um... You know what? You have a, you have a good point there. But I do believe that they want to do McIntyre and Rollins after this, so I'm going to go with that. I can see him doing that, and then uh, he would challenge him again, you know, if I lose, I'll quit or whatever like that, and then he wins on Raw the next night. Give the people on Raw a big thing. And the Raw after Mania. But then again, I think a... This is why part of me thinks like you should do the, uh, the shake up the night after Mania. Cause man, you can have like a big fucking. Th- yeah. I don't know. I think it's smart doing it two weeks after because the Raw after Mania is, is total chaos. Let let them have the chaos moment. But then again, there could be something gigantic for that day that we just don't know about. That is b- That's bigger. very very possible. Yeah. Kenny Omega AEW is bought and ever, all this talent comes over to WWE. <laughs> Boom. Um, second match I have listed here, which is officially the, ma- the main event of uh, WrestleMania. Oh. Ronda Rousey defending her title in a triple threat match versus Becky Lynch and new uh, SmackDown Tag Team, or, sorry, SmackDown Women's Champion Charlotte Flair, which did not see that coming. No. Well, that was right the fuck out of left field. This just shows that Vince McMahon and the creative team either A, needed Charlotte to look bigger. And better going into Mania because she wasn't the main story, 
Two, they had no idea what the fuck they wanted to do for the SmackDown title. And three, had no confidence in Asuka and the rest of the SmackDown Live women. Yeah. Which I think is a gigantic slap in the face. And if I was Asuka, I'd think about leaving my company now. There you go. Um, AEW Bound, I think Asuka would actually benefit from that. Yes, which we will get to in a minute. There's a female that just got signed there. Yeah. Um, but I would love to see a, you know, either a winner takes all title thing, where it's like whoever wins becomes the champion of both and becomes just the unified woman's champion, or uh, two out of three falls like they did Kurt Angle when he was a European in the uh, Intercontinental. First fall for one. Eurocontinental. Eurocontinental, yeah. The first, where it's uh, first falls for Raw, second falls for SmackDown. Yeah. But I think they already have a two out of three falls or something like that the night before. I don't know if they would. No, it's just you're you're you are right. So it's I don't know, I think I there's lots they could do there. I mean, because I, I heard a rumor where both they might do a winner take all stipulation in the sense where both titles are on the line, but if Becky pins one of the champions, she gets their respective title. But if the other champion pins the other champion, they will get that they will title. walk out with both, yeah. which I think is stupid. Yeah. I, I put think, them up for everybody. Now. Yeah, like mine, is, mine as well. Either you tell Charlotte, "Look, you have a choice here. Either you defend your SmackDown Women's Title in a separate match, or you now have to defend your SmackDown Women's Title as well in this match at WrestleMania, just like Ronda has to, is defending the Raw." Yeah, well, I'm game with that. That'd be good. I mean. <laughs> Um, but yeah, and then moving on to a, I think Becky, either way, Becky wins. Yeah. I think close that with her holding one or both. Either way. Uh, Buddy Murphy. Or is this a way for us to have what we were saying, a just different way of getting there? At the end, your show is having the four horsewomen of wrestling. With All the titles. titles. That is very possible. Yeah. That is very possible. I mean, we also called that months, months, ago. months ago. So just saying. I mean... Yeah. We're getting too old for this shit, man. Right? <laughs> we need vacation, man. <laughs> yeah. um, next match is listed here. Buddy Murphy defending his Cruiserweight Championship versus Tony Nese. How long has he had the title? Uh, since the Melbourne, the Super Showdown. I think Tony Nese wins. I was say, let's see, I'm just looking up now. Uh, it's probably, what, August? Or, like, June? October 6, 2018. October? I think he's due to lose. Yeah. I think, uh... I think uh, Tony Nese might actually win this one. But I am going to say one thing. What's that? For whatever reason, like I don't understand why they have guys win a title rumble, drop it, only to win it back at Mania instead of winning it the first time at Mania. Yeah. I've, I've made that a thing that I just don't get. Yeah. They also make it a point to have a match at WrestleMania with the champion retaining it only to have that match... The next week or very shortly after, and the then the have a switch. Year and lose. Yeah, yeah. Which, again, and I wouldn't be surprised if this scenario applies here. I think he wins. Buddy Murphy many, wins now, but then they have another the match night, later, yeah. and then there's a switch. Fair enough. Um, what about? Uh, I could see. I, I'd like him to, to defend successfully. I, I like Buddy Murphy. Um, what about the next match listed here? Triple H versus Batista. No holds barred match. Triple H loses. He must retire from re- as a wrestler. Well, as much as I would like to see that. Now, I think Triple H wins this match. I think so. Oh, I, I don't know. I think, I think Batista loses this year. Next year is in the Hall of Fame. This is honestly the one match on the show I just don't care about. Which I did originally when I heard about it, but now it's like, eh. I did like the fact that they made fun of the... Spice Girl reference of the "Give me what I want" yes. what I, thing. That was However, funny. Triple H doing it still kind of like, eh, he's just not funny anymore. He doesn't have that comedic shtick. No. If Ambrose did it, completely different. It's because Ambrose is more of a regular talent as opposed to. Oh, I think Ambrose is like your Bill Murray of WWE. Like he's just good at what he does, but then he also, when he does the comedy stuff, he's he knows how to deliver. I know. He's good at it. Um, yeah, I think, I mean, I could actually see it going both ways. I could see Batista winning and then Triple H retiring from in-ring competition because he's getting older. Yeah. Uh, I could see... Especially if that's a way for him to, like, 
go down and if with the XFL starting up, if the rumors are true that Vince is going to take time away from WWE and focus more on XFL yeah. and then Triple H becomes more of a WWE kind of a backstage guy, yeah, that could be a good way of doing it. Absolutely. But I then what that. do you do with Batista after? Because how can you just like take Batista right off? I don't know. Unless you have a celebration for Triple H after and then... I don't know. I don't know. We'll have to wait and see, I guess. I mean... I don't know. Next match is another match that, kind of like this one, I just don't care about. Do you think Orton gets involved in this match? Or Flair? I think Orton and Flair get involved. Although, Orton has his own match. But, I mean, maybe depending on the card, we'll get to there. Uh, Next match is listed. Angle versus Baron Corbin. Don't care. I I get I get what they're doing. It's he's, Kurt Angle's trying to tie up his loose end. It's Kurt Angle's farewell match. Blah, blah, blah. How, how funny would it be if he just says, "Hey, I got to pick this match." Like this is the Raw rival right before Mania, and he's like, "You know what? I'm actually going to change my mind." Baron Corbin, you thought you had a WrestleMania match? Yeah, you don't anymore because I'm not choosing you no more. Change my be, mind. That'd be funny. I think you're not even at Mania, and then chooses somebody else. I, I would enjoy that. I really would. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a match we've seen before, and I just I don't care. Yeah. I'm not invested. I get what they're doing. I understand the storyline. It makes sense, but I just don't care. Well, and two, I think I'm at the point now where the more I see Kurt Angle, the more I... It's sad, because he doesn't move like he used to. He's trying to, but you can just tell he's stiff, he's sore. It's just not the same Kurt Angle we To do. me, nowadays... He doesn't instinctively do things that he used to do. Yeah. Um, and I think he takes that extra time to do something smaller than he did before. Like, his, obviously, he's not as quick. He's older. Still looks awesome. Still does, yeah. Still don't understand the fucking glove. It's something that he's partnered with. He's trying to sell him. It's for lifting and shit. Yeah, but just the one? What is it? I... Michael Jackson? Hee <laughs> hee. Yeah. I didn't think I would actually drop a Michael Jackson reference, but still. Uh, honestly, with you, I'd never surprise if you drop a Michael Jackson reference. I'm never land surprised. Ha <laughs> ha! Uh, next match. Oh, McMahon. Annie, are you okay? No, I'm not. Shane McMahon versus The Miz. False count anywhere. This is another one. Nothing against The Miz. I just don't care. I'm tired of seeing Shane McMahon. Like, yeah. Have him go away for a while. It's cool that he came back a few years ago. Awesome. I love it. But he's just starting to do that thing where he's interjecting himself in the match. I get it. He's a heel. I get that's what he's supposed to do. But I don't care. I just, I don't. I don't buy him as a believable guy. Like, he throws his, he throws those work shoot punches. And, like, they just look dumb. Awkward. Awkward. It looks like he doesn't hit them half the time. He pulls too much and you see that they don't hit. It's just, I don't know. I'm having a hard time, and this has always been my criticism of The Miz, that when he is a baby face and they try to make him that... I'm going to get, like, if now that they're doing the personal, it's like, oh, I'm going to kick your ass. I don't believe The Miz as a tough guy. No, I believe him as a shitty heel. He's so good at it. Mm-hmm. So good. Why He's can't he just keep that gimmick as a baby face like Eddie did? Exactly. Like, I just don't get it. Like, he is entertaining enough where he can do that. Um, he just does it to the people that people hate. He could be the guy who's like, yeah, I do it. So what? That's why I'm awesome. That's exactly what got Dean Ambrose over. Right? Like, it's just, I don't know, like, I just don't understand why they have to always completely change who they are when they uh, make a change. Anyways, that's... I, th- I, think, I think it's think, insulting. I think Miz wins. That's fine. Yeah. That's whatever. Uh, next match, Styles versus Orton. This one I'm intrigued by. I think this match could be one of those... Sleepers to steal the show? I think it's a black horse for match of the night. That's racist. African-American horse. And I'm even going to say that to fucking... With Joe and Rey Mysterio, which I think is going to be great. Yeah. Which I still hope Andrade gets added to that match. Yeah. I'd be okay with that. Um, Yeah, I think... I, I, to me, I don't care who wins. I think Styles wins if Orton's doing something later on with Batista and Triple H. That's my That's my thought. I have a feeling <coughs> Orton w- wins, and they'll have another, or I think Orton wins, and they'll set up for something later, and it's a bigger match, maybe like a, a big... Stipulation or something. Yeah. yeah. Fair enough. Um, Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal, I think it's obvious who we think is going to win. Well, 
Outside of the two fucking idiots and Braun, who, who's all in this match? Who cares? It's everyone who's not in the match. I'm going to still say Bray Wyatt. That'd be interesting. Returning Bray Wyatt. I think Braun wins it. I really do, because they haven't given him anything in a while. Either That's that, all. here is my sleeper pick for the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. Gronk. John Cena. Interesting. My sleeper pick is Gronkowski. <laughs> He's already been in it once, <laughs> technically. Almost wasn't. But yeah, it's Gronkowski. John Cena come back, that'd be fun. Or a sleeper pick, have him at WrestleMania where he doesn't lose. Undertaker. Yeah. Or L- Lars Sullivan. That'd be an interesting way to bring him back. Especially if he's having all these mental breakdowns, but he comes back and we're like 70,000 people. <laughs> that'd be funny. You know what? We haven't heard from him for a while. That would actually make sense. And usually it's the way to like Baron Corbin won it. He came up. <laughs> So that's that's a good way to do it. No, you're right. What about Walter? If Walter wins the UK title and comes up and wins that, interesting. Yeah. Interesting. What about... Uh, Hornswoggle. He's not employed in the company. Exactly. Um, <laughs> Kurt Hawkins gets his win for the first time. <laughs> that would be awesome. <laughs> that would be like the Toby Reader story <laughs> of WWE. Yeah, let's do that. Yeah, I like that. We're going with that. So I'm going to say the obvious Braun, but the not obvious. I think I think it's too obvious that Braun wins. That's what I mean. The obvious, the over obvious is Braun. The not so obvious. I'm going to go with Kurt Hawkins returning John Cena. I also like that. Maybe a Undertaker because you know he'll be at WrestleMania. Why not? Have him win it. Cool. Or, maybe, or maybe it's like somebody like Kane, and that's like maybe his farewell match. His swan song? Yeah. He's busy being mayor and stuff. Fucking mayor wins, man! Yeah, right? Um, next match I have is this year. Samoa Joe versus Rey Mysterio for the United States title. It's going to be a good match. Yeah. I'm going to enjoy this. I really hope Andrade does get added to this match. Or at least involved. Well, if he gets added and he walks out as U.S. champion, I'll be 100% fine with that. I would be too. With, uh... Mrs. Alistair Black by side. Well, and then think about it this moving forward. You got a baby face Miz, you got a heel Andrade, you can do Andrade and Selena versus Miz and Maurice. The Although one. she's pregnant, so it might take a while. Selena Vega might after her honeymoon. <laughs> <laughs> Sex. Yeah. <laughs> Sex. You know who's also pregnant? Jojo. Yeah, that came out of nowhere, right? Eh? Yeah. Good for you, Bray. <laughs> Putting Sister Abigail in. It's daughter in, Abigail now. <laughs> right? It'd be weird if you actually called her Abigail. Yeah. Fuck that, be weird. <laughs> Shit, 3 2 for Chicago now. God damn it. 3 2 for Chicago? Yeah. And you're saying damn it? Well, yeah, because it was 3 1 before. Yeah, but it's still winning. Yeah, but still, I don't like when they get scored on. Next match Bobby Lashley versus, I'm calling it Demon Finn Balor. Yeah, Demon oh yeah. Finn Balor wins. They're already advertising the Demon. Which is funny because I. Watched Raw and granted not super close. Didn't see advertisements. I didn't even know this was a match no, officially. Not, I assumed this would be a match. I didn't know this was officially announced. They didn't they haven't advertised it on TV, but they have been announcing it like they've been advertising it with posters and shit like that. Ah so like with a uh, media advertisement without It makes sense I didn't see it because I don't have social media. Yeah. Ah, but it's enough. like okay, if you're gonna do like if you're going to see, uh, you know, how they have the, all that stuff on their buses and whatnot. Yeah. So when they have those, yeah, and like the posters and it's like that are out or the billboards, yeah, you see a Demon Balor on there. Which, he hasn't been Demon Balor in a couple of years now, so it's about time. Well, the last time was what, AJ Styles? Yeah, it was like, what, two years ago? When it was still going to be him and Sister Abigail. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, uh... I mean, I didn't know this match was official. He hasn't so. done it since then, has he? No, he hasn't. Like, that's a while. It's been a while. It's been almost two years, if not two years. I mean, I guess he hasn't really won that much, though. <laughs> yeah, pretty much, right? He's been kind of on the undercard. His first reign in the Intercontinental Champion was I kind of I still don't know why he doesn't do the Demon at the Rumble. Fucking guaranteed. Should. <laughs> right? Number one or two, absolutely. What or, be- we- or better yet, number, like, say, 15, he comes out in his entire 90 seconds, him going to the ring. What about if he comes in number one, gets eliminated first, number 30's Demon? <laughs> That would be awesome! It's like the Mick Foley way. Although, apparently that demon stuff takes hours to put on. So I'd say Demon Balor number one, and then he just comes back as regular Balor. 
Oh, you guys are going to a shootout. Anyways, um, <laughs> I'm gonna say uh, Finn Balor wins this. I again, I haven't even seen that they've been advertising for this match at all. So it's like, but Demon Balor he has to win. Yeah, the spectacle of doing his thing, absolutely. Um, next is Roman Reigns with Drew McIntyre in a singles match. I'm gonna say McIntyre. Oh, me too. Although I can see them giving it to Roman. It's his first like a f- big match back after the leukemia. I can see them giving it to Roman. But I want McIntyre to win this one. Give him some steam going forward. Well, they are putting him over hard right now. Yeah. Which is good. Because I do like the fact that uh, they're putting some sympathy on Roman Reigns. Yeah. Because, you know, leukemia didn't do enough of that. Uh, didn't you hear he faked the whole thing? Man, it's an angle, bro. So it's all an angle. It's but, disgusting. But then again, like I've also heard that there's like Joe... Or, sorry, Roman Reigns... Wanted to show different parts of Roman Reigns when he came back. So he wanted to... Show a nipple? Well, he wanted to show more emotion. He wanted to show more of who he really was. More like personality. Look at my tits! Oh, okay. So, like, maybe the fact that he doesn't get pushed like a Greek god could be part of that. Did you say Greek god or Greek dog? I mean, either Greek one... god. I, I say either one technically works. <laughs> Greek god, that's yeah, also a Greek dog. Greek god dog. Uh, but yeah, I think McIntyre wins that one. Um, next is Fatal 4 tag team match for the WWE Women's Tag Team Championship. Boston Hub Connection versus Divas of Doom versus the Iconics versus Nia and Tamina. I think Iconics win this one. I want the Iconics to win. I just don't think they will. I think the champs are going to retain. And then go on to have a singles match for the Iconics and lose? I'm also going to say two things. One, I think they're going to... I think WrestleMania is going to close with the four horsewomen of wrestling holding all the four titles. That'd be cool. With like all of them holding t- t- championship until no. the end. Um, and they're going to make that the big fucking story at the end. Do you think the other three horsewomen of Ronda's side come out and they get chased off? No, but I, that could be a Raw after Mania thing. Gotcha. Um, however, I still don't think they're going to take the tag titles off the team that just won them so soon well you never know they've done stupid stuff before they have <laughs> but I can actually I think you might be right in this one they actually could wait for like a uh, just straight up singles tag which is Bosnug versus the Iconics and then they would lose then so I think Iconics deserve to have them next also I'm gonna put it on I wouldn't be surprised if this is the last Wrestlemania of Tamina I think so I wouldn't be surprised. As in, like, she retires or she leaves the company? I think she might retire. Um, well, she is, like, 45. But that and it's... I, well, I don't actually think she's I just wouldn't be surprised if she doesn't have much more going forward. Like, I, I, I don't know. Like, to me, it's like how many people at that age still keep going? Yeah. So, um... And I can see, like, a Nia Jax going to SmackDown after. I mean, if Vince doesn't think there's enough people, uh credible enough on SmackDown. He's going to probably beef, try to beef up uh, SmackDown with, the, with some women. Yeah. So, I mean, Nia Jax fits that bill. Is, she's pretty dominant. She can be a very... Beefy? Well, I mean, she could be a good uh, good player in that game for a while. So Absolutely. And then the last match is the one that recently got announced. Daniel Bryan defending his WWE Championship versus Kofi Kingston. Yeah. Uh, what do we think? Do you think they actually pull the trigger and put Either Kobe? Kofi Kingston wins or we see a heel turn on the breakup of the New Day. I think it's either going to be, yeah, Kofi Kingston wins and then it's a heel turn after the fact, like, you know, in like a month, two months, whatever the case is, or Big E turns on him then and suddenly it's Big E, or Big e versus Kofi and Xavier. I really would not be surprised if both Big E and Xavier Woods turn on Kofi seems weird that they put their bodies on the line so terribly for that to happen. Do you think if he loses, they turn? No. I honestly do think it... Well, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if WWE does it that way, but I wouldn't be surprised if this was just a ruse to have I don't Kofi appreciate as a ruse. bigger main event star okay. from a singles aspect. Yeah. I don't appreciate your ruse, ma'am. Uh, by the way, uh, unfortunately, you guys lost in a shootout. Yeah. Yeah. At least you got one point, though. I, does that put us out yet? Uh, let's see here. Because the day, as, as soon as the Oilers are mathematically out, I want to see Toby Reader on the first line with Dreisaitl and McDavid. 
Yeah. One hundred percent. Um, standings. Let's see. Wild card. I mean, we, um, I don't think we're mathematically out, but we're we have to be fucking almost out. Wow, the East fucking just looks terrible. Everyone from Florida, Buffalo, Rangers, Detroit, Devils, and Senators are out. And then on the West, it's just two teams. <laughs> and I'm in L.A. Um, they would be 77 points. And the top team for it would be Colorado has 83. I think there's still a chance you could do it. Because we can get 10 points. So 87 would be it, right? Yeah, I think so. And then... Wait, 77... There'll be 77 games then. 78, 79, 80, 81, 82. So five, you'll be 10 points, yeah. So yeah, it'd be 87. So technically, you're not eliminated yet. Dallas, with this one point, has 87, so they basically clinched. Yeah. Well, I know I shouldn't say that because Arizona still has 81. So no, it's, it's still. They haven't clinched, but they may have. The Oilers won't be better than them. No, that's true. So the, the, basically, the second spot is the, available. The Stars have 88 points now. So yeah. even with ten points, the Oilers still can't get up to the stars. Yeah. Um, yeah. So Colorado needs four points. Maybe, four points to clinch. Maybe or just for the Oilers to be eliminated. Yeah. And honestly, the Blackhawks—they're winning right now, but now it's four-three. So it's the Blackhawks need basically win the rest of the game. And if they win, they chance. jump over the Oilers with a win. Yeah, they would. With a tie, they still remain. Like with an overtime loss or a straight up loss, they remain behind. Well, Oilers have more wins. That's what's keeping yeah. them up. Um, but yeah, and I think and they're tied in regulation wins too at thirty one. Yeah. Anyways, so the Oilers um, out of the thirty four wins, they've won thirty one of those in regulation. Yeah, that's not bad. I mean, it's not bad. So I, honestly, I think it's going to come down to the last couple games, and I bet you anything, Chicago is going to get within. Three points. Or that's regulation or overtime wins, I believe. Right? Yeah, yeah, not a shootout. Uh, but I think Chicago is going to get within three points of making the playoffs and then not make it. That's my prediction. Mm-hmm. Although they've been kind of sucking lately, so I can see within five. Um, the only other information or the only other news I have is Ali is signed with AEW. Yeah, I like that. That's a good sign. I'm enjoying that. Well, and uh, bolsters the women division. I to see. go back on the on the hockey front. Yeah. We are sitting five games out. Connor McDavid is seven points away from Nikita Kucherov for Fuck the RS. Fuck, he caught up quick. So I'm just saying, there's a ch- like anybody else, I would say not a chance. No, you know what? There's a couple, but like, very, very few. But I'd say Ovechkin, Crosby. How many points does Kane have right now? Uh, no, no, like in tonight's game. Oh, tonight's game, he's got one. He's kind of petered off a bit. So he has 103. Uh, tis, yeah, one assist. Uh, yeah, just one assist so far. He has 103, and Drysaddle has 101. So I think that is going to be a tight race, too. Yes. Near the end. Um, but I I do think Connor McDavid, with seven points out in five games. Okay. He's a decent chance. Anybody else know? McDavid, I think, is one of those few guys where he can make up seven points in five games. Fuck yeah. He can make that up in probably three. I mean, like a week ago, he's, what, 20 back? If that, yeah. I mean, getting six points in two games helps, so. Yeah. Because yeah. they're officially tied in games played in Tampa and the Oilers. Yeah. Not, like, Kucherov has played Man, I actually, 77 you know games. What? I, I kind of hope that that McDavid catches him because I think that'd be so damn funny he's leading all year again killing it holy fuck he's at 120 points just so far no one's catching him oh except for McDavid well just think in 77 games Kucherov has 121 points in 72 games or sorry in 73 games David has 114 so mm-hmm. their points per game has to be very close yeah I'd say so if not that'd be an interesting one but so um, the la- you know what the last thing I have hmm. it's a bit of a game I heard this it was like I think my last day of actually being on the social medias and it posed the question I enjoyed it so I wanted to get your take there was a Royal Rumble for food mascots who wins for food mascots eh we're talking like Ronald McDonald the Burger King 
and throw in any other like Mr. Peanut, shit like that. Any food, whether it's fast food, whether it's literally a food brand, food name, you name it. It's just a mascot for the food, eh? Who wins? I have one if it was made up. Well, let's hear it. The Stay Puff Mar- Marshmallow Man. Because he just has a step in the ring and crushes it. <laughs> Everyone else is dead, so he wins by murder. Yeah. Interesting. Right? Well. What are, I'm trying to think of, like, cookie mascots. Uh, the Keebler Elf. <laughs> the little like, bastard's not winning. They're like the fucking horn swoggles. Right? <laughs> Hiding under the ring. <laughs> so let's get tossed over the top. Um, you know what? I'm going to say Ronald McDonald. Because yeah, nobody know. has outserved him. Boom. I, I, you know what? If it's going to be anybody from McDonald's, it's going to be the Hamburglar. He's a sneaky <laughs> bastard. Grimace. Nah, fuck that. <laughs> fuck that. Bacon, bacon. Well, the hamburger is totally the repo man of mascots here. You take that back. <laughs> totally He's is. He's the best one by far from McDonald's. I love the repo man, though. Not fair enough. Like, um, I'm not sure, honestly, who would win. I think I said something about, uh, uh, I could see. As long as everyone beats the shit out of Wendy. I know, it depend, it depend, <laughs> yeah, it depends on the year, but I mean, time of year, the Coca Cola uh, Winter Polar Bear could win. Ooh, what about the uh, the Sasquatch? Kokanee? No, for the... Uh... Beef jerky? Yeah. There's a good chance. That guy's fucking freakishly... <laughs> what about fucking... Uh, what's his name? Brent Burns. He could win. He's technically a mascot for him. <laughs> Spokesperson, not a mascot. Same fucking thing. Can't, no, you're you're can't he, count real people. By day he's Brent Burns. By night in the full moon he turns into the fucking Sasquatch for the yeah. Fuck that. He's, he's saying that. What happens if the Sasquatch from Kokney and the Sasquatch from the Lynch beef jerky? What happens if they're related? What if it's the same one? Whoa, <laughs> Twilight Zone shit. He has a Kokney in one hand, beef jerky in the other. My life's perfect. <laughs> That'd be fantastic. Right? I'm trying to think, cause like a lot of the fast food one are common. Because I, I, I had this the question was posed in, I think, a YouTube video, and the guy said Mr. Peanut, because, you know, he looks rich and he could just buy his way, like, a uh, million dollar man. Ted DiBiase. Yeah. It's like, well, it's not a. Well, he's more like a, like a. He's definitely a manager esque. I just. I'd be more worried that, you know, someone would punch him and break his nuts. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, I don't think he has the. Uh, the cashews to win, brother. There you go. Um, Honestly, it'd be probably something stupid like uh, Sidney Crosby, who's the mascot for Tim Hortons. And you can't say he's not. He's in like all their fucking commercials. Definitely a spokesperson, not a mascot. He's a fucking mascot. Yeah, but so is Nathan McKinnon. Then they're tag team. It. <laughs> Drive down in the Zamboni, man. Exactly. All right, just nope. Kool Aid guy. Fuck it. Ah, you know what? That's a good one. That's a good one. He is definitely the macho man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you just hope he doesn't have something like, say, the kokanee uh, Sasquatch break and crack him, and then he just starts, like, <laughs> quote, bleeding out, end quote. That's how you get color, brother. <laughs> right? <laughs> Why is his blood green? Don't fucking ask questions you don't want the answer to. It's the mist. <laughs> like yeah, right? There you go. I'm... Oh, lemon lime! <laughs> yeah, Kool-Aid man's Remember a good Remember when they had, like, choice. their mystery flavor? No, I don't. Or they like the, was it, or or is it Gatorade? No, I think it was Kool Aid. Where they had the powder, and then uh, it was like a, uh, maybe it was blue, but that it was not like, it was like a different, like could have been like banana flavored or. Interesting. I'm not saying it was banana. I don't. I don't remember or like, that. Or yeah, they had like a mystery flavor powder thing. It was kind of cool. Oh. So I'm assuming we're count. Well, I mean, yeah, beverage is a. Beverages count. Yeah. Food mascot. Food and beverage industry. See, now if you would add social media, we could have made like a thirty participants of this. We still could. I just can't post it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Fine. Okay. We'll we'll think of this. We'll put it up, and then we'll decide. Fair enough. I'll make the brackets and shit, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. What's a battle royal? 
I like brackets. Even though it doesn't work like that, I still like we can, brackets. We could just like find like a simulator and then put everything in there and see who would pop out. That's true. What about uh, fuck? What's that? Uh, the Cheetos fucking cheetah. He's pretty the cool. Cheetos cheetah. Yeah, he's pretty mm. cool. Most of the things. Are there any more beer get ones? Uh, if you go by all the uh, Budweiser ones, wouldn't those Clydesdale horses count? Would the Duffman work? I mean, technically. I mean, if State Puff works, we got to keep... Oh, I, I, mean, I said... But then again, Duffman is a person. It has to be an animal or a mascot. No, I'd it's, it's, say he's technically a mascot, but I mean, I said if we're doing fantasy, I'd do State Puff, but... No. I mean, if we're doing the fantasy one, then yeah, can, Duffman. Can, can we say it can't be human? Uh, like, the mascot can't be a human being? I'd say if that's the case, you can't use Burger King, Wendy, or Ronald McDonald. Because they're all technically human. But a clown. Kill a clown? I, it's still barely human, but still human. Pennywise wasn't a human. Pennywise was an alien, but he also <laughs> took the shape of a clown. Yeah, exactly. We don't know Ronald McDonald. Holy McDonald's. fuck, what if Ronald McDonald's Pennywise? Invading everyone's home since 1910. Like I have I, no idea when McDonald's started. He's probably killed the same amount of people. Billions and billions murdered. <laughs> well, with the yeah, heart attacks, yeah, you're not wrong. I mean, I mean, the McGriddles aren't really the safest thing They're to eat. fucking McAwesome. <laughs> they are. And they're McDeadly. McDeadly. And Wendy is just a woman, so I mean, half the time they're not human. They're pure evil. <laughs> At least once a month. Mm, sometimes more. I feel they're that, that's, that's a shout so out. many wrong. That's a, that's a shout out for all two of our lady listeners. We have two? Law of averages, maybe. I was going to say, maybe your wife, definitely not mine. No, it's not mine. Huh. Oh. I don't know, social media. She has no way of knowing how to find this one now. <laughs> <laughs> well, she follows me. Yeah, I guess that's true. Well, she probably go through your She's together. always followed me. That's true. <laughs> That is That's true. That's so wrong, though. But not, yeah, it's not, not it wrong. True. I mean, you're <laughs> it's right. true. It's sad because it's true. Yeah. Great Metallica song. Where are you going to be coming up? Uh, I'm going to be in Radway this Friday night, taking on Pride and MRB in a triple threat match. Fuck them up. <sighs> Fuck them up, Parrot. Fuck them up. And then this Saturday, I'll be defending the Pure Power Wrestling Heavyweight title against... Big sexy beast brother Graham and <laughs> Cougar meet Kyle Sebastian. <laughs> I'm all about the three Actually, ways this weekend, brother. That's pretty cute. So yeah. Getting those three ways Back to can. back uh triple threat action. Back to back three ways in your mouth. Yeah. So yeah. And then what are we at today? This is the 29th and 30th, and then April 6th, RCW and Mundare. Moonder. I have no idea what's going on in there, but uh, uh, we have sausage, and that's a little bit of all right. That is a little bit of all right. I mean, are you going to be in Mundare? No. Uh, you can catch me. Sausage. I think, think the next time you catch me is Red Deer on the 13th of April. <laughs> yeah. And then the 20th of April, I think they're I'll showing there. Edmonton. I think I'll be at that one. Yeah, I will not be at that one. That one, I think, is the 18th anniversary of the Maria Wozniak. I think it's 18 years. I think. Maybe not 18. 8th, maybe? 8th. Yeah. That makes sense. I remember an 8. Yeah. 8th makes sense. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I'll, I'll be, uh, you know, if this title defense is successful, I'll be taking on Sydney Steel for the PPW title in Lethbridge. The real deal, Sydney Steel? Yeah. Nice. He has Flex Appeal. Flex Appeal oh. and Sass, that's Heel. I think he eats oatmeal. Squeal. And uh, he has the ass where you want a cup of few? He really does. I mean, you said that once on social media. He really does. I mean, his favorite color is teal. Um, his real name is not Neil. His, he, fa- he, his favorite uh, green vegetable is kale. I had to say it with an accent. He, uh, his favorite fortunes has wheels. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> That's really all I got right now. His favorite pastime is to steal. <laughs> uh, 
I guess that's two ways to say steel, so yes, that counts. Ha ha! His favorite wrestling maneuver is the Beal! He's actually done that to me before, yeah. so yeah, I agree with that. Huh. I don't know if we have anything else. He likes to eat veal! Ha ha! Uh, this segment's gone on way too long. <laughs> That's because we were trying to think of stuff that rhyme. <laughs> you know, you know how long long this segment's gone on. Real long. <laughs> His favorite movie is Real Steel. Third way of steel. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> there you go. And it's a different way of saying it from his name. Yeah, his name is a proper noun. Ha. Ah, fuck yeah. I don't know what that is. His favorite <laughs> animal is an eel. Fuck. <laughs> Why did I have to say wheel so goddamn fast? <laughs> <laughs> His favorite fruit is a keel? I heard it's a keel, but I said more of like a kale, but with an accent. A kale, yeah. Fuck, it's kale. Damn it. Yeah. Oh. Oh! Oh. In RCW is a heel. Um, how did how did we not go heel so oh, soon? Fuck. Yes. That's brutal. That is brutal. <laughs> you know what? We're ending it right there because <laughs> fuck, we both forgot heel for so long. That's bad. Oh, man, that's... One time I kicked him with my heel. In the dick. <laughs> kicked him in the dick with my heel. Ha ha! Spelled different. You know what he does to bananas? Peel? Exactly. Yeah, that's true. Uh. It is true. Anyways. <laughs> yeah, that's where we find us coming up. Social media. You know what? Crash. We ended it with us tag team in that one. So yeah, I think true. that's a that's a good way of ending yeah, it. That's true. Yeah. Um I feel you. He already said feel. I'm saying it again, I don't care. <laughs> um where can they find your social media? You know where you can find me? Doesn't fucking matter, I don't have it. <laughs> yeah, after last year you really fucked off. Real fucked up. <laughs> well, I mean, Instagram, Chris Parrish, Facebook, Chris Parrish, uh, Twitter cool. at Chris Parrish. So yeah, and uh, sounds a struggle. Yes. Well, I think it's tag struggle. SOS. That's really how this name started. Was the Twitter thing? Yeah. Because we couldn't get the struggle on Twitter, but we got tag struggle. It's true. It was an Eskimo game, actually. It was an Eskimo game. Um. Is that the first Eskimo game we ever went to together? First Eskimo game I ever went to, period. That's when you got the Oakley sunglasses, right? It is when I got yeah. the Oakley sunglasses that I lost. Yeah. Three different times. Right. Don't know where they are. They're probably in your wife's, like, room with all of her clothes. So my bedroom? Yeah. Yeah, it's probably in there. You're right. Well, because didn't you say last time that she probably had them? Yeah, she probably does. So then there you go. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. Mania. Hmm. Playoffs for hockey. It's going to get good here real quick. It's going to be fun. Yeah. I really hope I can uh, do something on Mania Sunday. Yeah, me too. I'm I really like, hope I can do I'm something. I'm really banking like, on the fact that like my family Mania. sucks and I can do something that day. Fair enough. Fair my mom's birthday. I know what your mom's birthday is. So I got I to be like the good boy. Want, no, but right now I'm actually I'm looking like the, the good son. Because I told my mom, like, look, I do, yeah, there's a lot of stuff I can do, but I'm keeping it open for you. And right now, she's trying to get word on the other siblings. Because they're making it difficult. Oh, that's nice. I'm killing this son shit, brother. You killed the other son? You killed your brother? Well, I mean, Jesus. My favorite kid, what can I do? Fair enough. I mean, because he's the youngest. You're the baby. You the baby. I got to baby face this shit up, bro. So. Well, I mean, yeah. That's how you do it, man. That's how you do it. Yeah. I mean, my brother and sister ain't delicious, but I am. That's true. I mean. That's true. It's part of my DNA, and I'm not theirs. Fair enough. Huh? Um, yeah. So I think that does it for episode one, two, zero. Yes, it does. Of the Sounds of Struggle. Sounds of Struggle. Um... I'm Chris Parrish. That's my. That's run. not a question. That's that's a, that's a statement. You are. <laughs> that, that was my Ron Burgundy. 
Oh, fair enough. Because he was th- doing yes. the thing with the Kings. Yeah, no, no, no. So you're, we, you're we right. didn't make... Hey, actually, this podcast is really good. But uh, Okay, if we're doing Ron Burgundy things, okay. I'm a Nike. Go fuck yourself, San Diego. <laughs> I'm trapped in a glass cage of emotions. Milk was a poor choice. <laughs> Milk was a poor choice. It is a poor choice. Uh, Just in general. Oh, really? Getting the chocolate. Well, chocolate milk. We're not going back into the chocolate milk debate. We're leaving that one alone. No, no, no. <laughs> it's being left. I'm not, I'm not going into that one, but I, Hello. I am still shocked of how bad when you okay, because like it's a thing, you heat up milk and then you put the chocolate syrup in, and boom, chocolate milk, right? You heat up milk? Well, no, I'm just saying you can do that. Oh, okay. Right. Um. Oh no, sorry. You put the thing into the milk, make the chocolate milk, and then you fucking heat it up. And, you know, that's one way of making chocolate milk, right? I've never heard of the heating part, but yeah. Yeah, I just guess. put it in the microwave. Okay. But you know what does not taste good? When you just heat up actual chocolate milk. Yeah, if someone says warm milk because you go to bed, that's weird. Gross. No, but like, you think, okay, this is just the easier way of doing it, right? Nope, it doesn't work. So you heat up chocolate milk? Nope. You put the stuff in, make it chocolate, and that's it. Leave it cold. No, well, sorry, cold. hot chocolate is what I meant. Oh, you yeah. hot? Okay. Yeah, sorry, my bad. Yeah, I've never heard that before. <laughs> I can't imagine that would actually taste really good. Anyways, whatever. Yeah. Till next week? Till next week. We are Tag Struggle. We are real. And spectacular. <laughs> and a little bit of all right. Struggalicious? Well, that's what, yeah, that's what we bleed. We bleed that struggle. In the struggle dome. <laughs> There's so many things we can go off kilt here, but I'm gonna choose not to. Off kilter? <laughs> Why is everything becoming a question? I don't know. Us hitting puberty now. <laughs> we are. <laughs> this is what we do. This is what we play for. Uh, until next week. I guess so. We say later. Good chance. Running out of breath.